gonna talk about it. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. It's a place to be. Teaching art collaboratively. It's a show that lets you know where art goes creatively. Talk about it. It's a place to be. Teaching art collaboratively. It's a show that lets you know where art goes creatively. to season two of Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, About it. it. I am Yvonne Lopez-Taylor from Carter Academy. I am Alyssa Wagner from Mead Middle School. And we are here to talk to you today about using art in your classroom and doing integrated lessons. And we're going to use the book, Maybe Something Beautiful. We have the English version and the Spanish version. And this is also a Read for the Record book. And this book is inspired by a real-life artist team. It's a husband and his wife. He's actually the author and illustrator of this book. And it is talking about... Talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> How to beautify your city and working together to make something beautiful. Very and cool. That's yes. cool that it's in Spanish, too. I hadn't seen this mm -hmm. one. <clears throat> yeah, I got that uh, from a gift from my uh, literacy coach today. <laughs> nice. Good timing. So this book is this little girl. She's going through the city, and she sees that everything is gray and sad, and she's a little artist, and she wants to make her city beautiful. So she starts handing out pieces of artwork to everyone. Oh, that's a cute idea. She goes, and she meets some community helpers, and she meets an artist. And so together they collaborate and they're working to make their city beautiful. They start with murals. And so this is the muralist to artist. The author is inspired by the work that him and his wife do. They started in California painting murals. So before California was all dull and gray. And now it is beautiful because of these two collaborating together. Very cool. And so this is how you're going to integrate it into your lessons. This one is, we're working with the second grade class. Okay. And so these are teaks that you can use. So in math, they can, we'll look at the illustrations. And we can look at identifying shapes, decomposing shapes, when we're looking at the different cityscapes. And when the children are painting, we can look at language arts, where we can talk about um, personal nar narratives and writing persuasive compositions, they can persuade their city <laughs> councilmen on what, you know, if there's an abandoned building, how can we make it beautiful, let's paint a mural, what would we paint? Okay. And uh, social studies, comparing and contrasting urban cities and suburban cities and rural areas. And our art teaks, of course, are um, creating artwork using lines and shapes. Very cool. So I feel like there's a lot you could do with this in all of your, you could really take it and do a whole kind of unit on it and do like, okay, in math class today we're doing mm -hmm. this, connect it back to the book. Science, we're doing this, connect it back to the book. Social studies and language arts as well. And that's kind of the goal is that we want to try to incorporate maybe one book that can go across all the subject areas so it makes that connection in each classroom. And these are some of the vocabulary words that we're looking at. Neighborhood, community helper, transform, artist, and in pink are the art words. Okay. Mural, muralist, public art, shape, and color. That's very cool. Now, the fact that we're in Houston, we have a lot of murals here in Houston. Mm -hmm. Which we'll get to that because I have a whole little lesson, mini oh, lesson awesome. for that. And we are going to be talking about two different artists. Okay. We have Diego Rivera and Maya Hayek. So I chose someone from more in the past and then someone more in the present. That's cool. Because, you know, kids will always ask you, are they still alive? Yes. Can oh I see gosh, them working? Yes. And I always yeah. try to show a students and artists actually working on something yeah. so they see, like, oh, they're just like you. They're just like right. me. And so this is a, um, a way to do compare and contrast. You can talk about how are the how is their artwork similar? Mm -hmm. What can you find? Can you find shapes that are similar maybe in both of their murals or a theme that may be similar. 
And I have questions uh, here too, like who, um, who are these men? What are they doing? Or you can play I Spy, like um, can you find a shape with three vertices? And there's oh, several in cool. there so you can, you know. I love that, the idea of the I Spy. And um, you could even do like a, okay, I, I Spy, um, or not even I Spy, but like, What's what's it called when you have, um, like your, is it called I spy? When you I spy a shape of three vertices and they have to try to figure it out. What yeah. It, oh, well, okay. <laughs> just kidding. I spy. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's an I spy with my little eye. Yeah, a, okay. You could do a primary time. color shape that has no sides. Okay, that's really cool. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. And it's a good review for even like my middle schoolers. It's a good review. Um, too, because there's sometimes I, I ask them to draw something, a, a 2D shape, or, and they're like, what? Mm -hmm. What's that? I'm like, okay, so let's go back Bring to our, back. our yes. math review. So that's a really cool, I like that. I think I'm going to take that back to my classroom and use that. Love I love it. Because see, we have, and I have anchor charts everywhere in my classroom. Like, I will have a, you know, what other shapes? We have 3D and 2D, because all across the grade levels, that's what they're reviewing, right. and they're always going over, and it connects to every day. Another way to get our students to start talking to each other is through sentence stem. So this is one that I like to play with them. So we'll take turns. So, okay, what shapes do you see in this piece? <laughs> then there's also questions like, you know, we can take a look right here where it's this art makes me feel because. Because, you know, they'll say this art makes me feel happy. Okay, but why? Okay, why? Explain yes. more. Yeah, these are cool. Thanks. I like these. So mm -hmm. like, or one thing I would change about this art would be because, mm -hmm. and usually, you know, you'll get something like, oh, I would change the colors, but okay, well, why? What colors would you change it to? Okay. And then give your reasoning behind it, which, mm -hmm. is, which is always a good thing. And then connecting it back to the book, there's lots of questions that we can stop and talk about. And it's, um, how do colors make you feel? So describe, now bringing it back to connecting with them, describe mm -hmm. your city. You know, what do you, do you see any artwork out in your town? Um, if you find, you know, where's a, where's a place that looks great? Because that's where they're transforming gray areas. What's a gray area that you want to make beautiful? How would you make it beautiful? And then another thing that we would talk about is what's the difference between graffiti that you see and public art? Yeah. Like what makes it a mural? What makes it art? And usually I tell them it's, you know, they got permission to do this. Right. <laughs> we actually just had that conversation this week with, yeah. my, with my kids, like graffiti versus mm -hmm. public art. And why is one considered illegal or bad and the other one is celebrated? Well, then you go into the whole discussion of, well, this is a mirror, but it has graffiti type style. Yes. Why is that OK? Why is it not? Right. Exactly. And I think that's a good discussion to have. Um, especially, like, I know with your older elementary and with mm -hmm. my kids, they like to start writing on their mm, desks. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's a kind of a way to bring in that conversation to what they're doing as and well. And you bring it back to what is your message? What are you trying to say with your art, with your mural, with mm -hmm. your community? And so our, we're going to get to our project real soon. So then after you read the book, you can prompt them with maybe something beautiful. Mm -hmm. a look around your city. So I showed them artwork around our town. Oh, you know, yes. everyone kind of knows this mm -hmm. one. And um, so then their prompt is, what would you design? So you can have it as a writing prompt. You can do it um, as a uh, think, pair, share, talk together warm as a group. Yes, yeah, so a warm up. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, and those questions would be great, too, for warm ups. These here. Mm -hmm. um, they can write it in their sketchbooks, or you can write it in their journals. And again, making that connection across the classrooms. Yes. And so our project is we are each going to make a mini mural. Okay. So let me set these aside. Okay. And so and everything is colorful in her life and in her book. And so we can either do it two ways. So I have one way where each student will design their own mini mural. Mm -hmm. And it could be anything. So like the little girl did pictures. Okay. And so we could do pictures that mean something to mm -hmm. you. But we're going to take it to where we're going to create our own mini city. Okay. And so we're going to take four by three little cards that you can cut or index cards work fine okay. too. And so we start with our color. Very simple. We can, you can use crayons, markers, or colored pencils. Okay. And, you know, you w we want to make it so that it's 
classroom teachers can use it. You can use do it in your library sure. or in your art studios. It's pretty much wherever. Very cool. And so we can start with what color makes you feel happy? Uh, well, my favorite color is purple, so I'm going to go with purple. Mine is yellow, but I'm feeling orangey today. <laughs> so you're going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, it's a feeling. It's true. Okay. So we're just going to color a background. Okay. You can also take it where, on your background, take advantage and you can go... Uh, about you can talk about value. I was just gonna say, like <laughs> it would be such a good review for value. It's like we're not just coloring; we're uh, you can You're go still over reviewing elements. Reviewing those elements of art, which are so important. You can even uh, start doing lines. Yeah. So you can prompt them, everybody. I want you to draw me a wavy line. And then you're creating texture when you're building up, right. building on your That's lines. Weird. So once we have our backgrounds complete, Kay. the next supplies you need are scraps of paper. These scraps of paper are going to become your buildings. Oh, okay. Now this is just scrap construction paper or? Uh, construction paper or butcher paper. You know where you do all the die cuts? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got all that extra. Oh, yeah. So we save everything. Yeah. We're hoarders. <laughs> or you, and, okay, so we can either, I always tell the students, depending on your age level, mm -hmm. you guys can draw it out, you know, use a marker or a, a crayon, okay. and then cut it out and then glue it, or, you know, you can cut freehand. Okay. You can even do a little self-assessment with the students and say, okay, pick up a crayon. So everybody, I want you to draw me a shape that is equal on, has four sides and is equal. What shape is that? A circle. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm testing you guys. Oh my gosh. Then you can say, draw me a shape with three vertices. Make it as big or small as you want. Draw me a shape with no sides. Draw your favorite shape. Oh, we just, we have <laughs> Yeah. Twinsies. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're going to start building our own little city. We're going to start with our buildings. You can use the fun scissors or you can use regular scissors. Okay. And I suggest um, glue sticks. But my, honestly, my favorite little trick is I call it magic glue. And it, have you used it before? No, no? I haven't. <laughs> it eliminates... Um, the caps getting lost? Well, the caps getting lost, um, too much glue, Yeah. you know, the whole one dot. But this is just perfect. So all you have to do is, a uh, little tip, you empty out half a glue bottle onto a sponge, uh -huh. wet it a little bit, and then throughout, maybe every two weeks, you just spray a little bit of water. And it's, um, you just, I tell them, you know, you just tap it, never touch the sponge, pick it up, and... Yep. That's cool. So this is our magic glue. You heard it here, folks. Life magic hacks. Glue. Yeah, exactly. Life hacks. So then you can take your shapes, <laughs> and you're going to build your cityscape. Okay. See, we're kind of skipping a step, but you can have your students sketch out what they would want their city to look like. Okay. And I always tell them, if you guys drew your shape, make sure your glue is on top of your pencil lines or your marker lines. So you can't so see So when it. you glue it, yeah. exactly, you can't well, see it. Well, and sometimes I think it's good to, like, not necessarily have them, like, draw it out because sometimes our kids get so, like, in the habit of, like, oh, I've got to. Well, it doesn't look like this. Yeah, yeah, where if they just have to kind of do it freehand, then you have a little bit more freedom, maybe. They're less afraid. They're yeah. more confident when... That's the word that I was looking for. Yes. Then I also show them the little trick of flip it over, cut your sides. Trim. Trim, yes, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> We're just real good with the vocabulary today, aren't we? So okay. Once, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm oh, you're fine. behind. Mm. 
Oh, I didn't even use crazy scissors. You can even limit their colors palettes too. You can say only use primary colors or use cool colors and warm colors. That would, and that's also another way to assess what they know as far as their color theory. Oh my gosh. No, these scissors <laughs> can be hard sometimes. Okay. There we go. And then now you're going to add your shapes, more shapes on top of your shapes. You're going to now make your city beautiful. This is a very simple lesson that you can use to review and assess. And it should only take you about one or two class periods. And you don't have to just use cut paper. Mm -hmm. You can use, again, anything, crayons, markers. You can talk about, tie it in with science and do mixtures and have, mix your colors. Yeah, that'd be cool, like with paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you have a whole collection of them, I'll let you finish, but I'll show yeah. the final project. I take all of their work and now we have made something beautiful. We have our little mini city. Oh, that's, that's really cool. So each kid did their favorite colors, their favorite shapes. And I love that each of them looks so different, but together Similar. It's, it's very coherent. united. Yes. Coherent? Cohesive. Cohesive. That's the word I wanted. You can also take it to a different level and you can do abstract art. So this is the same concept. Each student has their own little card. And this one, we are reviewing lines. Yeah, I like that. That's, it, like you said, everything's different but similar. And so it gives it a cool, like, cool viewpoint. And this one is another little assessment that I did. I just wanted to see what they knew when we drew portraits. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of assess their level but still be able to create a piece that we can use. Sure. And so what I did was, around my school, we put all of our abstract art together. And so I have a giant mural that's hanging in my hallway right now. Oh, that's With really all cool. their work. And the best part, though, is that every kid knows which one they did. They know exactly how they made their school community beautiful. Right. And I mix up the grade levels. Oh, So I'll that's have cool. a first grade next to a fifth grade. And they, you know, it's it's amazing. They're like, oh, I know that's my sister. That's cool that you mixed up the grade levels so that they kind of have to search for theirs. Um, you know, you never know where it's going to be. And another way to use different tools depending on your students, we can always use rulers. You can, for like your higher level students right. or for your whoops, older grades, uh -huh. you can have them, give them measurements. I need you to draw me a city, a skyscraper, that is, you know, two inches tall, one inch wide. You can do, then you can, they can trade their cards yeah. and they can do, um, measure the perimeter or measure oh, the area cool. of their towns. So you could really bring it up to a higher mm -hmm. level with your third and fourth graders and fifth graders. Oh, yeah. You know, do find your area, find, find your perimeter. Um, and there's those also other math for terms that I can't think of right now. <laughs> for those other students that may be struggling or make um, not be able to cut, you can find stencil shapes. So we can use those. Then there's also these bigger stencils where you can, you know, your whole um, your whole stencil won't fit, but you can talk about can cropping. Yeah, <laughs> go off and because um, I know like sometimes like last year when I did <clears throat> something work with stencils. My kids, they were so, like, terrified of the thought of going off mm -hmm. their paper. I'm like, why? <laughs> it's fine. Just go off of it. That's okay. And so that that's mm -hmm. something that um, would be a good. Well, then this way too, with the sense, so they'll be they'll be able to see where they're going to stop and where they're going to start. Right. And then they're making lines. So it's like, okay, what kind of line is this? We're making a zigzag line almost. Yeah. All right. And then there's other ways to tie in your book with your lower levels. 
And so we've been working with our ILS and our, our ILS teams, and we have a kindergarten pre-K lesson, and this one would be compound words. And so there are lots of compound words in the book, so we can have the students find compound words in the book. And another one that I actually thought uh, was really interesting was uh, similes. I never thought about using similes in oh, the yeah. book. So like he says, his paintbrush was like a magic wand. Oh, those are yeah. good. Yeah. So you can do, um, you can make a class book, find all the similes, and then now make your own similes and create a book. You could even like go along and do like this and have them illustrate different similes that were in the book or, you know, like that they're thinking about mm -hmm. and make like a mural of just similes, simile mural. Oh, would yeah. be kind of cool. Oh, I do like that. Yeah. Didn't even think about that. Then there is uh, another idea for your lower grades was a lot. There's a lot of movement and a lot of rhythm in the book, and they're painting along to music. So what if you say we talked about how do colors make you feel? So what about what does the sound make you feel? How does it? How does this kind of music make you feel? You know, like a jazz song versus yeah. say like a salsa song. Yeah. How is your line going to look? There is an artist um, that she is a high school artist. Or I don't. Well, I think she might be out of high school now, mm -hmm. but she paints to music and so she she can't see um or it's she hears sounds and those mm -hmm. sounds have colors like kandinsky yeah yeah very similar yeah and it's it's an actual medical uh, oh, really? thing oh. where it crosses over in their head and i can't That's think so of cool. what it's called off the top of my head but it's where she when she hears music she hears colors mm -hmm. and so she her paintings are songs Oh, so wow. she like will say, okay, this is this song by this artist, and this is what I heard. And so it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, I did some research on her mm -hmm. um, when one of my students asked about it, and it, it was very, very interesting. So that's something that's you could cool, yeah. bring in and like show them that video. You could say, okay, you know, the, so you know, the song's fat. What color mm -hmm. do you think this is? Yeah. And it kind of gives you a chance to kind of think about something else. Different. And again, that's cross-curricular. Yes. Music, art. And science. They can write. Yes, yeah, science. Because you're ta really talking about, science. you know, you're talking about your brain and the, the cross wires mm -hmm. in your brain. I love that. The neurons. Science. Then we also have <laughs> other books that you might be able to tie your work with. So we do have a storybook about Diego, mm, yeah. and since That's we talked one. about lines, it could be Lines That Wiggle. I love Lines That Wiggle. Too. It's such a cute book. And then two for even, actually, no, even your older students are going to love this oh, because you yeah. can make them actually wiggle. Show me a line that is, let's see, it's Wait. waving <laughs> waving lines from end to end, so I make them wave, so oh, yeah. I, I wave. always had my kids, <laughs> my kids too, <laughs> they would, they would, or they, we would do the class wave. Oh, like, yes. Yeah. Um, and... I, I also have a snake um, in my room, mm -hmm. like a, a snake, and he's Larry. His name's Larry the Line, and he makes all these things. Oh, I love sounds. that. So the kids would always ask if they could use Larry. So those, my star students. It's would, like a real life anchor chart. Yeah, <laughs> right. And so I had a actual snake on my Promethean board. Fake, obviously. It was orange <laughs> and like blue, so you're good. Um, <laughs> the snake and the the kids who were their class dojo stars, oh. they got to actually use the snake. They got to use Larry to make the lines that I we were reviewing that. that day. So that's something. That's a lot of fun too. Then there's I love this book too. What's this? One? It is called Triangle, I think. Yes, Triangle. Oh. And so he's visiting all the other shapes, and he wants to be a square. So he's trying to fit in. Oh, that's cute, though. There's also, they came out with, like, rectangle, I was going to say, I think, I think there's a square. I think I've seen circle, maybe, or square. There's one that called mm. square, but it's not the same style, though, so maybe it's different. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Then <laughs> what got me thinking about um, reusing our little post-it card, or a little card, was not a box. And so I like to do this lesson, too, where you give them a rectangle, mm -hmm. any shape, all the students have a different size, and so they have to come up with something else. Oh, cool. So then we can, you know, then especially with all the makerspace mm -hmm. areas. Yes. Which goes back to your ILS, because mm -hmm. they all have makerspace makerspaces in their libraries. And we talked about, you know, it's a class collaborative making a mural. Mm. So this is another good book, Cassie's uh, Word yes. Quilt. I've done um, very similar, the murals um, with the Cassie's word, word Quilt. I've done it in February for Black History mm -hmm. Month. 
and um, I did it with my first graders, and they had to think of their favorite place and then label all of the things oh, in their yes. favorite place. And, and that's perfect for a pre-K kinder where they're labeling what they're writing, right. what they're reading. And we talk, they talk about labeling in science, you know, labeling oh, yep. the parts yep. of things. And, and so this is another just another way to bring it in. And then we, mm -hmm. we worked on spelling and we worked on, you know, noticing all of those things. So and these, like there's so much from one little card that you can do. Uh, yeah, it, it's Or especially insane. just with one book. And so then there's other, uh, there's a good website you can go to. It is teachingbooks.net. Oh uh, yes, will, I just yeah. found out about that that website, and from I was the ILS? yeah from yeah from the <laughs> ILS. No, it's such a good resource. It tells you how to pronounce the author's name correctly. Yes, it'll give you other lessons, not just what we're right. showing you, but additional lessons you can do, and, and cross curricular lessons. Yeah, and like sometimes I know on the one that I was looking up just recently, they had like interviews with the author and videos with the author. So oh, yes. um, where they were talking about their book. So you could mm -hmm. bring that in where the author is actually talking about their book and it's not just you. Exactly. Up there being and the like, kid sees who created it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And this one, did you talk about that one? Uh, oh, this one. Yes. This is uh, Bajan Michel Basquiat. He's another muralist. And he's kind of up and coming, isn't he? Or is he, he's fairly no, recent? He's, no. Well, ish. It's more like in the 80s. Oh, 80. Okay. Well, and that's recent for me. <laughs> <laughs> but his work is not what you would call pretty art, mm -hmm. you know, or what kids are used yes. to seeing. And they can actually see that this is called art, too. And then you have another discussion of, like, mm -hmm. is this something maybe beautiful? Right. Or what makes it beautiful? Why isn't it? Or do you think it is? And, and you spark up a bunch of conversations. Right. And then you can have that, like, opinion conversation, too. Like, I, one of the things I always know mm -hmm. that I always had to have was, or the conversation with was, just because you think this mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have to think it or can't think something different. And, like, w a rule that I always made in my classroom is, like, like I respectfully disagree, mm -hmm. but or I respectfully disagree, and they always had to start all their statements with that, and so that's like kind that. of another Building way to vocabulary. Yep, and and conversations. Yep, I mean a, one of the struggles with kids is you know texting and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So being able to have an appropriate conversation with somebody mm -hmm. is is a big part of it too. So, and so yep, again we have our little cities. We're gonna make our little mini mural right there. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. All right, well, what are we? Are you looking for this? Was this for our mini murals? Oh no. Oh. oh. Well, another. So the way that I put all the murals together was I just took my glue stick or glue, and you glue them all together. Which is this is just one sheet, and about a class, it'll be maybe four that you get from okay. one class, and so put them all together, and you make a giant mural. Okay. So yeah, you just glued them onto mm -hmm. the back Recycled of. paper. Recycled paper. Water stained paper. Yep. <laughs> you know, the paper that nobody wants that was stepped on five times. Yep. We made it into something beautiful. Exactly. When you make a mistake, make a beautiful oops. Yep, beautiful Look, oops. there's a whole new yep. another book. <laughs> and so we hope you, en you enjoyed our city or making how we made our city beautiful. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, <laughs> I am Art with Wagner. And I am uh, Miss Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't wait for you to join us for our next Let's Talk About It. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it.